Hello, everybody. I hope you had a fantastic week. Uh, mine was pretty good. Really no complaints at all. Uh, today, uh, the day that I'm recording this, not the day this is going up, uh, is my son's seventh birthday. Uh, so that was that was fun. We did some fun stuff. In fact, we did most of our fun stuff last night because uh, today we had a scout meeting. So my son is in Cub Scouts. Um, I don't know if I said this in the last one. I can't remember. But yeah, he's in Cub Scouts. He's a Tiger Scout now because uh, that's what you get for that specific age group. There's apparently a Penaract pretty close. I think that's pretty close, uh, which is cool. Maybe we'll go do that here if we can get away from all these gods. But either way, yeah, it was, you know, kind of a standard standard week. Nothing too great or too horrible going on, you know, so which is which is nice. It's kind of relaxing in, in the sort you know you don't have to worry about stuff too much all right i guess it's good that the the jins don't do too much damage all right let's let's find this penaract okay actually it's way far away so let's uh let's keep it on our map and we will uh watch to see if anybody goes over there and then we will teleport over there and get goodies i think that's probably sounds like the best idea so you don't have to watch me just run around like an idiot uh that's what that's what we will do but nonetheless i thought today we would talk a little bit more about science because science is a fun thing to talk about and, and i enjoy it and i hope you guys enjoy it too it sounds like you know whenever i talk about stuff it's uh usually quite popular people keep asking me to to do it again and so today i thought we'd talk a little bit more about physics now physics is of course the study of oh there's people over there now of stuff around you and see we're going the wrong way nope we might have missed it uh yep i think we missed it physics is the study of how kind of the world works and kind of how things around you work so it's it's really really important is this a bee is there a hive around here or is that a wasp it's hard to tell sometimes. So very, very important. That's why I always advocate that people at least do basic physics. That way they can understand how the world around them works a little bit, you know, which I think is an, an important thing. So, but nonetheless, I thought we would talk again about how uh, things around you work. So for uh, a while ago, we talked about how microwaves work, which I think is interesting. I think there's a lot of people that have kind of a a, a bad reputation. You know, they, they don't like uh, microwaves because they think that they're, they're bad for them and they emit harmful radiation that will kill you or deform your baby or, or whatever. I don't, I don't even know. But so we uh, largely debunked that myth. That was a, a while ago that we... That we talked about that one. So today I thought we'd, we would pick another kind of household item that a lot of people probably have or, or may not. I don't know. Depends on what part of the country and what country you're in, first of all. And, and talk about how that works. And so today I picked air conditioning. Because air conditioning, there's a lot of things that work on a civil, similar level to, to air conditioning. Which we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, I guess the, the first thing you need to know about air conditioning is the fact that heat, just like a lot of other things, like moisture and, um, there we go. Sorry, I, I was I confused there for a second. I thought I saw something else on my screen. Uh, heat will move from areas of higher concentration to lower concentration so of course this means that heat will move from what happened oh that was a never mind that was a trickster or whatever wasn't it heat will move from things that are hot to things that are cold i think that even if you didn't know this we're gonna take that because i think that might be actually our our daily quest even if you didn't know this specifically i think you kind of knew it you know um heat will move from things that are hot to things that are cold and that's just you know, everything's trying to find its equilibrium. And so the thermal equilibrium would be if you have two things and you mix them together or they make contact 
and one's hot and one's cold. The hot one will warm up the cold thing until they're both the same temperature and then they're in the thermal equilibrium. But that's the, that's the direction that heat travels. And so if you have a house and it is 91 degrees outside and you want your house to be 70, the, the problem is that the, the heat will go from the heat will go from outside into your house, uh, which is the opposite direction of, of what you want. You want the heat to go from in your house outside, but because it's hotter outside, uh, that's, that's not what happens, basically. And so in order to do that, you have to take the heat in your house and make it hotter than the heat that's outside and then transfer it, transfer it outside, basically. That's, that's the gist of it. And the second thing that you need to know, uh, which I think a lot of people probably know, but they may not know that they know, is that when you take a gas, right, and you compress that gas, then it will get hotter. And if you take a, a liquid and you expand that liquid into a gas, it will get colder. So for instance, uh, those, those things that people have, they're like the compressed air things that you use to clean out your keyboards and stuff, right? There's a liquid inside of that. Come on, there we go. There's a liquid inside of that. And when you, when you hold down the nozzle, that liquid expands and it becomes um, a gas. And when that happens, then the, the bottle gets cold because your liquid is expanding into a gas. So that's, that's how that works. So, so the, uh, the basis of your AC is called a Carnot cycle. C-A-R-N-O-2, not like a carne, like a carne asada, no. Carno, it's some, I think he was French um, physicist that, that came up with this. But basically what you do is you take a liquid and you expand it. And when you expand it, it gets cold. And then you take that, that cold liquid. There we go. Perfect. I oh, sorry, you take that cold gas and you run it through a coil and you heat up. Oh, there's some good stuff. Oh, we got a tarot card. That is the first one I have ever got. I've never, I've never even seen one before. So let's actually head back really quick. We'll put that in our thing really quick. So, all right. So you take, you take your liquid and you expand it into a gas. And when you do that, it gets cold. And then you take that cold gas and you run it through a coil and you take all the heat in your house through like a forced air or something, right? Like a forced air furnace. And you put this in there too. There we go. And you add heat from your house into that cold gas and you heat up that gas. So what you're doing is they're taking heat from your house and putting it into that gas. And then you take that gas and you compress it and make it back into a liquid. And when you do that, okay, it's not our daily quest. We can just toss it then. I said we can just, t I said, oh, can we not drop stuff in here? I guess not. And when you do that, when you compress that gas into a liquid, it gets really hot. And it gets even hotter because you took that heat from your house and you put it into that. Let's see, what do we want to get rid of? This chameleon. Yeah, we'll release you because I'd rather have the farm. Piggy. Piggy, piggy, piggy. Nah, it's useless for us. All right, back to the back to the godlands. So, yeah, so you take that gas that now has heat from your house, compress it, it gets really hot, and then you put it in a coil outside your house, and now that liquid is hotter than the temperature outside, and so the heat leaves the liquid. And so basically what you've done is you have pumped heat outside of your house by expanding uh, expanding your substance. Oop. That was a little bit reckless there. 
Okay, that was r pretty reckless as well. Not the band Pretty Reckless, uh, which is a good band. And I believe their n new album comes out today. Um, but yeah, so oop, I didn't see those because of the white. So what you've done basically is you've taken heat. Ooh, toxic sewers. Yes, please. You know what? No, I don't want to do that. Not I'm not on a night. It's not not a good class for that. So you, you've taken the heat, put it into your gas, compressed it, and then pumped it outside. And this is also how a quote-unquote heat pump works. A heat pump they use to both heat and cool your house, whereas an AC you would only use to cool your house. And basically you do the same thing, but there's a reversing valve, so it sends the, the liquid or the gas outside or inside, depending on which direction you want to pump the heat. And so basically what you're doing is you're taking heat from the air outside and you're pumping it into your house in the winter. Now the problem with that is that when things get below about 30, 32 degrees or so, there's not a lot of heat in the air outside and therefore there's not a lot of heat to pump into your house. And so it doesn't work for climates like Colorado, right? Or, or like Montana or... Some of these, like Utah or whatever, where it gets kind of colder because there won't be enough heat in the air outside to pump into your house, so you won't be able to heat your house effectively with it. So but that's how... I don't need that. That is how an AC works, and a Carnot cycle is, is a better representation of that, basically. I need to go this way. I need to look at my map. Now, that is also how your refrigerator works, right? Your refrigerator is just an AC. It's, you know, it just works the exact same, only instead of pumping the heat outside, it's pumping the heat... Oh, thank you. It's pumping the heat into your kitchen, right? Because it's just pumping it out of your refrigerator. So there was actually... There's a, there's a cartoon called SpongeBob SquarePants. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I'm sure you have. But there's an episode where he accidentally leaves his freezer open or his refrigerator or whatever and everything freezes right so the reason that wouldn't work sorry to burst your bubble but it's a good example the reason that wouldn't work is because it's just pumping the heat outside the heat you know you're not actually cooling the inside you're, you're pumping heat into your room when you use your refrigerator so if anything it would, let's see, we need to drink these two, but we're all dexed out, so we'll save that. So in reality, it would actually, oh, there's a lot of stuff here. Mm, nothing I need. It would actually heat your home because of all the inefficiencies of your, your refrigerator causing more heat than it's trying to pump out, so. Yeah, so if if you lay, if you leave your freezer open, you won't freeze your your kitchen or anything. You'll actually heat it up. So I don't recommend it. Plus, it's a huge waste of energy, right? And there's something like I think it was like sixty to seventy ish percent of homes in America have AC. It's definitely it's definitely one of those things where, like, Arizona, you know, is very cooling-centric. Uh, Maryland, Virginia, cooling-centric. There's a lot of places that they have a furnace, but they don't really ever use it. They, they mainly use their, their AC. Um, I think Arizona is a perfect example of this. When does Arizona ever get cold enough that you need to use a furnace to heat it up? Probably never unless, you know, nuclear winter or something. Uh, so, anyways, I hope that makes sense. Um, I, I made it a little bit, uh, user-friendly there. You know, I, it, that's the basics. There's a lot more to it than that. But, oh, I think, no, it's the next one up. Never mind, that wasn't our daily quest. But that, that's basically how your AC works. So, um, and, and a heat pump and also your... And also your refrigerator. These are all basically the same thing, right? There you go. Have fun in your toxic. Should we go in? 
Nah. Alright, let's... Let's, uh, leave here. Over here. There you go, man. Have fun. Alright. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's one of those things, like, these are things in your house. I feel like it's something that you should know how it, how it works, right? So if you have anything that you want to know how it works, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll, I'll do that for a video, you know? Of course, there's also furnaces. We didn't talk about that, but, I mean, to be honest, a furnace works by moving air past a burner, right, and a heat exchanger, the burner heats up that air, and then you pump it into your house. It's, I, that's basically, that's basically how a furnace works. There's really not a lot to it. Not like an AC, right? But, uh, I don't know, there's, there's different ways to heat your house, right? There's a mini split, which is very popular in, in like, Japan and, and some parts of Europe and stuff, but it's basically just a small, uh, wall-mounted heat pump, right? You put one of the little wall-mounted units in every room, and then you connect them to your compressor outside, and and you heat up your home. So, but that's, you know, and then there's boilers, of course. Boilers work by heating up water, and then putting that. Let's just get out of there. And then putting that water through a radiator in your room and transferring the heat that way. But I know that. You know, for those of you who don't know, I that's why I do for a living is design mechanical systems, mostly HVAC type stuff. Um, and it's one of those weird things, you know. Physics is is very, you know, known. I guess right. You you have thermodynamics. Ooh, a cemetery. You have like thermodynamics or something, you know how much heat is being transferred to one place or, or another. There's not a lot of guesswork or anything there, right? I thought there's other people coming in here with us. There's not a lot of like guesswork and, and stuff in that, you know? There's that pet skin. If you guys haven't seen that pet skin yet, there's one right there. I think it's supposed to be a clown or something. But... So, yeah, thermodynamics is very, you know, the, you have a known quantity for everything. But fluid mechanics is very much not that way. It's like you kind of know what's going to happen, but small variations will ultimately change things up. So much so that you design a system, right? And you build, let's say you build a hundred of these homes, right? And they're all the same. Like, let's say you, you work for a a production home builder, right? They they take the same home plan and they build it 20 times in a community and they put it in five different communities so they build like 100 of these homes, right? And maybe you build them all exactly the same, but, you know, the, the person installing it was careless here and there or made some small mistakes or adjustments. So they're not perfectly the same. Those systems will actually uh, act and behave differently. So, you know, you, you design these systems the best you can and you get a pretty good result and you, you know that result pretty well. But there's always this sense of like, you know, small things that, that kind of change how everything works, you know? Um, so you can't always know exactly what's going on. There we go. We got ourselves a whiz. We we had a uh, we had a whiz there. Ha uh, p jokes yeah. So it, it's always it's always kind of weird because you know mechanics or something, you know how that's gonna work right. You have a lever. You put this much force at this distance from the the turning or the pivot point in the lever. This is how much torque you're gonna get right. And that, that's something that you can easily calculate, and it's going to be accurate. But fluid mechanics is not. It's, it's kind of almost guesswork, even if it's not, you know? So, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. And that's why sometimes you'll get customers who are like, ah, oh, we have problems, and you look at their stuff, and it's like, it's built the exact same way as everyone else, but it, it functions differently. Just small, small little things, you know? So... But yeah, 
I don't know. I hope you found that interesting. You know, I'm trying to think of other things we could talk about as well. Like, how do, I don't know, internal combustion engines work? I, I feel like most people have a pretty good grasp of that, but we could talk about that maybe. Some of the stuff you almost want a picture though, right? Like, how does a Wankel rotary engine work, right? Maybe you have an RX-7 or an RX-8. They have that weird rotary engine in it, which are, they're kind of cool, right? How does that work? Well, it's cool, but that's something that you really need a diagram to really fully understand. Because you can say, yeah, you have a, a triangle moving in a almost eight shapes kind of oval chamber. And as it drags along the edge, it compresses and and then, you know... The, the spark hits and it explodes and then it goes around to the next edge. That's how it works, but I'm sure unless you've seen a rotary engine, you probably have no clue what I just said. It's got a triangle and a circle and a, an oval or what, right? So, and that's kind of the, the issue about talking about this kind of stuff to some degree in, uh, in video form like this because some of the stuff, it, it really helps have a picture. And of course we can put pictures, right? Of course we can add pictures, but that might detract from the actual video. And I also know a lot of people will, oh man, I thought for sure we were gonna get something from that. This guy has some good gear too. But I know I know a lot of people listen to this stuff and and they don't don't want actually watch the video so having pictures and diagrams would be useless to them anyways so but I don't know if you have a request and you want to know how something works uh, just let me know you know and assuming that I know how that thing works you know if not I can at least kind of look it up and, and get a gist for it uh, I'll see see what I can do you know it's 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 one of those things that physics is so important because, I don't know, I like knowing how stuff works, right? When I was a kid, we had a show called How Stuff Works or something similar to that. And it was always cool watching it, you know? Uh, how It's Made is another fun one as well. You can see how stuff is made. Um, but it, it's one of those things like, this stuff is happening around you. So it, it behooves you to to know how stuff works, right? Because then if something breaks, maybe you can fix it, which will save you money if you fix something yourself instead of pay someone else to do it or just buy something else new, right? Save yourself some money there. And guys, I'll be honest, the girls like when you know how to fix stuff or know how stuff works, they do. Most girls at least, you know? So... Uh, that's, uh, that, that's in your favor, for sure. You know, if, if you are looking for a, you know, romantic partner, that's a, a good quality to have, I'm sure. I'm, and you know, I'm sure some people don't care about that. Or maybe they don't think they care about it until you, like, flex your muscles and fix a car or something. You know what I mean? And then, and then they care about it. Because... Look, uh, look what my boyfriend can do. Can your, your boyfriend do this? Ooh, that's, that's actually some good stuff. This is the game telling me you need to be a mystic. That's what the game's telling me to be. All right, final battle. This is it, guys. This is the final countdown. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. I, you know, I'm going to be a little bit biased being an engineer. You kind of have to like physics and, and math and and that kind of stuff being an engineer because that's what you do all day. If you don't like it, you're not going to have fun doing it, right? So, but I don't know. I think it's something that's just important to know, just in general. Kind of have at least some grasp how the wor world around you works, right? And you can predict stuff more more accurately. And that's a very, very useful and good skill to have, right? So, I think I've probably harped on that enough. I'm sure you guys understand what I'm talking about. I've never actually finished this boss, I don't think, with just two people. 
I think we've always had a large group. So this will be interesting. A little bit scary. The uh, the final boss here will summon minions a lot. Oh, there's one in this corner. If you don't kill it fast enough, and it'll just crowd the screen. So that's a uh, scary a little bit. I appreciate that this warrior is also buffing me. There's a trend right now where warriors will basically just buff them, like they'll run off and just buff themselves so that they can get loot and so that you don't get loot. And that's kind of lame. This this game is supposed to be a multiplayer experience. You're supposed to help each other out, you know? There's no PvP in this game because I feel like they don't want people to be like killing themselves or each other, you know? All right. We'll sit right here. Yay, we did it. We got a bow. Oh. Almost died. All right. So, yeah. So that's uh, that's how an AC slash your refrigerator slash a heat pump works. So, but I, I don't know. I hope, I hope you guys find this stuff. I like this stuff. So I hope you find it interesting as well. So please let me know if you do. That way I can know to do more stuff like this in the future, but I think we're gonna probably leave it here. It's about our our 20 minute, or sorry, 30 minute mark. Man, time flies when you're talking about fun stuff like physics, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you in the next episode.